guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching House of the Dragon. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 6 of season 2 of House of the Dragon and the last episode. Ooh, we are looking for dragon riders, um, dragon seeds, seed riders. Don't come here for facts. Anyways, I totally forgot about Hugh and Ulf. And um, thank you for people in the comments who reminded me of them because I was just like, oh, it's definitely going to be Corliss's uh, bastard sons. And uh, maybe, yeah, as well as. So, uh, really, and I'm, I'm sure that that might have been what Masaria was doing when she was sending people there, was to, like, gather and sneak people out. Um, I definitely think if Hugh's daughter dies, that is definitely going to make him change allegiance. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if, like, those are the only people they round up. <laughs> and, like, like, I don't think dragons just go, no. I think they go, no. Dracarys! You know, so... I, I worry about people seeing if they can kind of even be in the same room. Now, I, I know that they can because Tyrion was in like the the crypts or the dungeons or something when he released Daenerys' two dragons. So as far as we know, I think he is not Targaryen or Valerian, so or Valerian. So I, I know it's possible for people who are not of actual descent of that bloodline, but I also don't know if they would have feared Tyrion at all. I think they probably could look at him and go, cool dude, he drinks and knows things. Um, so I'm curious to see how this dragon seed thing actually works. Um, Rhaenyra and Alicent both kind of face the same thing where the men that uh, are in their lives don't really trust them with battle and with war and they weren't taught. You know, I think, I hate that it's Fair that they don't have the knowledge, but I also think it's incredibly unfair that like Rhaenyra was never taught that by her father. And I know her father kept peace and he was probably hoping she would never ever have to be in a war, but that was a really, that was a, a Viserys dropped the ball. He really did. Um, and you know, Rhaenyra can look things up and she can learn about how to draw up battle plans and fight a war. Um, as well as Alicent, but Alicent kind of being tossed aside because she had already been regent once. Um, Aemond is kind of the next in line, so it does make sense. But even for her little foot fetish guy to be like, oh, you're but a woman, <laughs> you know, and her having that moment where she kind of realizes what they did to Rhaenyra is what they're doing to her. And uh, yeah, there's a a little bit of a hypocritical thing happening there. And I still like Alicent as a character, and I still feel bad for her because she's always been the dutiful daughter, the dutiful wife, the dutiful mother. Not a caring mother, that's for damn sure. But, like, she's always tried to do the best she could with the information that she had. I think she was almost willing to just... I mean, her saying Viserys changed his mind only helped the men that were already going to try to put Aegon on the throne. Um, but I think like she felt like she had a part in that and kind of realizing that she didn't, uh, that's kind of a blow, but you know, like she's, she's always tried to do what she thought was right. And <laughs> oh, Allison, <laughs> you big dummy. And you know, what's really sad is that you have Aegon who's in this bed, he's dying essentially, you know, they're pulling like the, the armor off of him and all these wounds are on him. And like, he's in all this agony and pain. And like, if he woke up and he felt those burns, my God, seed or what is it? Seed of the poppy, milk of the poppy, milk of the poppy, just, just doing shots left and right. Just get a full shot ski. Just, just, just go down the line. Um, yeah. And when he wakes up and he calls for his mummy, oh my gosh. The children on this series have been involved in adult shit. Like the, the, uh, 
essentially all of the adults have created this chaos and all of these kids have gotten caught up in it and they weren't allowed actual childhoods or, you know, they've always been pitted against each other. And, you know, for even for Eamon to know who the like legitimate fathers of Rhaenyra's sons were and like say that to them, like that's taught behavior. Somebody's not born that way. They are definitely shown to like behave that way. Um, so I feel really bad for the kids, but you know, now Eamon, I kind of, I kind of want to see what, what it's like for him to be regent. <laughs> We've already seen him shutting down the, the palace gates. No one's allowed to leave. No one's going to be happy about that. Um, you know, uh, he did cut down the rat catchers. So, I mean, bravo. Uh, but what his next move is from there, like, you know, you know, he's, he's playing chess up here a little bit in his own mind. I don't know if they're all playing the same board or not, but uh, definitely I'd like to see what his next move is. Now, Corliss had wanted to name uh, Bela, yeah, Bela, the uh, heir of Driftmark, and she says, I'm not blood and fire. You need someone who is of sand and sea. And obviously, that's going to be probably Alan. Um, I think that that kind of creates a problem with Reyna a little bit, uh, or even Bela a little bit. Like, I I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I, I'm curious to see if he starts having an actual relationship with Alan and Adam. I don't even know if Adam even knows like what his who his parentage is. Um, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Alan does. Uh, I'm very curious because, you know, sea smoke just floating around up there. Just sad, upset, restless. He needs himself a writer. I think we've got one in mind. Uh, we also got to visit uh, the Eerie and uh, see Jane Aaron. Jane Aaron, yes. Um, and she was promised a dragon <laughs> to help protect the Eerie. And she kind of got two baby dragons and some eggs and um, a mouth or two to feed. Uh, I think she might have gotten like three kids total to like take care of. Um, so she actually got like more work. Here you go. Take care of these eggs. Raise these children. By the way, these dragons, they got to grow up a little bit. Um, and I could see you're not wanting to really have her men rush out to help Rhaenyra at all. That kind of wasn't the deal. It was the best Rhaenyra could do at the time. So I don't know if the dragon seeds are going to play into that or not and like have somebody like show up like and land on the Eerie. I don't think we've ever seen a dragon like in the Eerie land there. Like that would just be wild. Now I really want to see it. I think I would just be like tracking that shot. Like, let me see it. Um, what else happened? So I'm trying to go over everything that I think was like really super important um, with Rhaenyra and Alicent and the Targaryens fighting. But like separate of that, you know, we had Harrenhal. And Harrenhal is just an absolute clusterfuck for Damon. Um, he hasn't really done well um, he had the Blackwoods kind of pillage and plunder the Brackens. Uh, I'm sure that there were women that were being um, not treated well. I don't want to say it and get flagged, but you guys know what I mean. Um, and that was kind of with his permission and a little bit of like a shove from him um, to have the Blackwoods do that. And uh, I will say that the Riverland people, uh, they ain't taking no shit. They're not impressed by Damon. They don't care if Damon wants to burn them with a dragon. They're going to stand where they're standing and not be moved. Like they're, they're not going to change their minds simply because like he threatens them. And he's kind of befuddled by that. He was just like, who was just willing to die by dragon fire? And, you know, apparently somebody who's standing on their principles. And, you know, he's never run into this before. And definitely the woman that stood up to him at the very end, I was like, I would not speak to Damon that way. She had no fear and speaking to Damon the way she did. And I think he has to really find that he needs to give the Riverland people more respect than what he has been doing. Um, but not only that, um, is that he's been seeing things and his last vision was wild. <laughs> the show knows no bounds, but you know, he got himself some mommy issues. And he still has himself some mommy issues, apparently. You know, he's talking to uh, Alice and like she, I don't know if she is a a spirit of Hall. She said she was a barn owl. I mean, she very well could just be a ghost that's wandering 
Heron Hall and, you know, he's the only person who can see her. Um, or she is, in fact, like constantly drugging him. I feel like he would be able to, I don't know, stop that from happening a little bit because uh, unless his hand is still bandaged because she wrapped his hand, then we know she's not real. And I think that like with the the group of people that watch House of the Dragon and the boys, the Venn diagram for people who like think other people are fake. I'm trying to do two circles. There we go. There we go. The Venn diagram right there. Uh, that's the people that uh, think people are imagining other people. <laughs> and he very well could be. Uh, yeah, but he, he needs to... <laughs> Where's Damon? <laughs> like, I want Damon back, you know, uh, uh, maybe a renewed Damon or like, I don't, I don't know. But the, the one we're getting where he's just off having like, you know, dazed and confused moments in Heron Hall. Can we move that story on? Can we progress a little bit? Now, someone who is progressing things, not only Bela, you know, uh, she was kind of a, a rising badass of the last episode. But then there was also Jace who, you know, made a deal with, um, I always want to say the Tullys because it's the twins and it's not. It is, oh, I see his face. The guy from Harry Potter. How, phrase? The phrase? <laughs> I'm, I'm like picturing Arya in my mind. It's like, yes, the phrase. Uh, and, you know, had a meeting with them and pretty much kind of pledged that, I don't know what they pledged actually. Now I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if they bent the knee. Oh, that they would have passage through the Riverlands. Jesus. my! I watch so much stuff in a week. I'm back at work. Like, There's been a lot of things that have happened in, in the last week from, from last Saturday to today, just in regular life, and then like work life, and then like the channel. I can't see straight half the time. So uh, I am really looking forward to getting into this episode. And if this is your first time with a rosé and react, welcome back. <laughs> it is Sunday. I can't wait to work tomorrow and have a headache. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices to do the things we love, <laughs> which is to drink and know things and then possibly forget it. So guys, with that being said, let's get into the episode. Did that just show me lease? I think it did. Oh no, the Rook's Rest Sunfire May Lease. Oh wow. Okay, that was a powerful new beginning. Is this Jason Lannister? Is that the banner? Yeah, it looks like a lion. I bring a thousand knights of my own. And seven times as many archers and men at arms. And a lion. An actual lion. I suppose you will make for Harrenhal at once. I want you to send a raven to King's Landing. Tell my brother we are ready to march. As soon as Prince Aemond is able to join us. On Vega. Oh, great. And uh, until the prince makes his answer, my lord? My men have had a long march. They're going to make themselves They're at home. Most eager to embrace the hospitality of your keep. I bet. Crazy they're traveling with lions. I mean, it makes sense with the Lannisters, but still, I can't wait to see that in action. There is a large dragon in the Rivlands, Your Grace. My brother's army is strong, but it does seem to I am the Prince you. Regent, not a dog to be called to heal. Tell your brother that if he does not deliver his host to Harrenhal with haste, Damon's dragon will become the least of his worries. Wow, that's a way to behave. Damon, but it does seem I have a task for you as well. Oh boy. Oh, I thought he was going to talk to his mother a certain way. Even if the blockade could be broken, are we to invite these alien raiders into our waters so close to King's Landing? It's time you set out for Arrenhall, I think. Oh, he's not listening to anybody, is he? Your Grace, if Damon prevails in the Riverlands, I no longer have the numbers to challenge him. My uncle is a challenge I welcome. If he dares face me. He will. He will. I'm kind of looking forward to that. I see we're all agreed. I don't think anyone's agreed with him, <laughs> but they don't have a choice. Aymond, boldness is one thing, but overconfidence. Remind me of your place on the small council. Ah. Uh... You know very well I represented your father during the last years of his life, and I have been a counsellor to Egon. Capably so. Father's dead. He's booting her from the council. 
served the realm well at a time of need. That need is ended. You are no longer obliged. Oh, girl, you're fired. I'm sure you'll be much pleased to return to more domestic pursuits. Ugh. You can still slap on me as your child. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought she was going to. You're on unemployment, girl. Corliss! Probably the one character I've loved since the moment I've, well, I've seen him on the screen. His look is just commanding. Put it on. Let's have the, the council sit and listen to Corliss because this man has wisdom. Bring him forth. Whom? Are they meet, meeting dragon seeds? What, what's, what, who is this? So Stefan Darklin, your grace. No. Your grandmother's grandmother, Ariana, was born a Targaryen princess. And I have been thinking, could it be possible? Are you gonna stand in front of a dragon? Consider such a thing. I must protest, your grace, the risk involved in such a venture. I am but a man. Let him decide. The dragons are gods. Your grace honors me beyond what I deserve. Oh. I well understand the risk and I accept it with gladness. Wow. I swore to ward my queen with all my strength and to give my blood for hers. That is my oath, your grace. He is brave. Then perhaps the gods will favor us. Uh, I don't think the dragons you have down there are the ones that are going to be for him, but... <clears throat> Why did I think that was Viserys for a second there? Did that not look like him? <laughs> hey, Damon. You tripping, boo? Is he going to see the throne in front of him? Oh my god. Is it Patty? Did you say it? The air for a day. Did you say it? You should have been at my side. But instead, you chose to celebrate your own rise. Laughing at me. Laughing with the whores <gasps> and licks It's Patty. No. I decided. Don't. To name a new heir. You are to return to Runestone and your lady wife at once. By order. Of your king. Damon looks so heartbroken in that moment. Oh. Matt Smith, you kill me, you kill me. No. Open the door! <sighs> Hold the door! Hold the door! Woo! Hi, buddy! All right, perhaps the culprit has been tampering with my peace. A friend by day and a foe by night. Sir Simon? To, what end? to mine, perhaps. Mm. Perhaps you resent my being here. There's a dragon there protecting them. Perhaps Probably not. You are an agent of the high tower rabble. Huh? Can we chill the fuck out, Damon? Or are you still in league with your club-footed nephew? Or is it Rhaenyra herself? Damon! Damon! You need to leave Harrenhal immediately. Whatever your game is strong, I assure you, your king is on his guard. Yes. Always. And stop watching me. No one was watching you. Making me sweat, buddy. What a performance. Yes, please go up and be in the air. Fly back to Dragonstone. Oh, let me see that baby. Oh, hello, baby. Oh. Oh, you could kill me with a look, but still. Oh, here she is. There are older things in this world than you or I 
or a living memory. You are not the player, but a piece on the board, as am I, for that matter. You struggle to see there's an anger that blinds you. She never even wanted it. The crown. She spared it no thought. Well, that's perhaps why your brother gave the crown to her. Perhaps mm. those who strive for it are the least suited to wear it. Absolutely. Viserys never wanted it himself, if you recall. He came to him, and he did his best. It's not a prize to be won, but a burden to bear. Absolutely. She is so wise, even if she's fake, or a witch, or a ghost of Harrenhal. They would rather die stuck in it than yield one inch to one another. Then I can do nothing. You? No. Oh, there she is! Burn Owl. Do nothing now. In three days' time, the winds will shift. At least go for a spin on Caraxes. Cause like, I just... I need to see that baby. He needs to spread his wings. Let's go get some sheep or something, right? <laughs> oh. Sir Stefan's gonna get burned to a crisp, I think. He looks like the stapler guy from Office Space. Steven Root? Um... Do we whistle for him? Here, boy. Oh, boy. So the dragon keepers are fine. Oh, Sir Stefan. That is a beautiful dragon. Which dragon is this? Sea smoke. Sea smoke. The boss. Oh my god, he's beautiful. Paris. Sea smoke. Uh, is that a heal or a... Uh, I'm gonna get closer to your level to f you up. Really? Really? Were you gonna go like take him out to see him come up or something? I am so worried for this man. Hey buddy. Boop the snoot. Sir Simon? Sir Simon? Oh my god, I am sweating like crazy. I've done it. I don't know if you have. Wait until you're on him. Oh! Oh no! Oh! Oh! Oh, Sir Simon! Oh! And the Dragon Keeper! Sea smoke has fled Dragonstone, and Sir Stefan was a valiant knight. Most he knew the risk. If perhaps foreseeable, I myself, if you recall, was in favor of treating with Lord Mutton to march on Rook's Rest, a more conventional approach. True, <laughs> not as sensational. You're such a weasel. His, his numbers were few, but we may yet retake. Thank you! <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. It's my fault I think that you have forgotten to fear me. Well, yep, yep, you gotta keep him in line. <laughs> he was a little free with those words. Surely he was not the only possibility. Might there mm -hmm. not be others among the highborn of the Seven Kingdoms? Who will be so foolish as to try after hearing what befell Sir Stefan? I don't know. I think it'd be pretty dope to ride a dragon and die trying. It's not like there's good television shows on in this realm. He cannot destroy his own city. Neither can they overthrow him. Maybe not. But it is harder to wage war abroad when you must also keep peace at home. Mm-hmm. 
I'm glad Masari is here. Masari is a great addition. If I may, Your Grace, this becomes you. I think so too. I find this whole look very attractive. No, carry the sword with you. <laughs> it's awesome. She's a warrior at heart. I've been waiting all day. I'll take anything. Scraps. Oh boy. Perfect, I yeah. I your dragons then, but none for us. Where's our meat? We want meat. Can't treat the small folk this way. It does occur to me that your grace has yet to name a hand. Ooh, so ooh, pick course, me, pick me. Brother, but you need one who may advance your cause with shrewdness and subtlety. <laughs> I'll make it your responsibility. That's all he wanted. It is an honor I've never considered for myself. Not to serve his hand, you toad, to fetch him. Send word to Otto Hightower. My grandsire may be overcautious, but his devotion to his family has never been in doubt. Oh, wow. Mm, you'll see it done. He tried so hard to get rid of Otto. <laughs> I like it. If it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger, kiddo. Oh, you poor thing. I'll see my brother. Uh, uh. During bandage cleaning time? Mm. Uh, uh, you f***ing jerk! Go f*** yourself, Amond. Seems my brother has a long recovery ahead of him, Grand Maester. Okay. See that he is made to rest comfortably. Ewan can command a room. Wow. Not all of us, I suppose, are called to great deeds. Some of us must serve in smaller ways. This is huge. Even if they are not what we would choose for ourselves. You're taking care of the future of the realm. Uh, I know it's difficult, but it... What is it? Oh. The dragons. Is it possible to make them vegetarian? <laughs> oh, the baby dragons are so cute, though. You misled me, my lady. I did what? Yeah, what does she mean? There is a large dragon in the veil. Oh, I thought that her baby dragons were doing that. Maravit began shortly after the war, ranging more broadly for food, my maester's surmise. <gasps> Girl, that's your dragon. It is large and formidable, but alas, wild. Reyna. Oh, please go to that dragon. Reyna's got this. Oh my god, she just wasn't the right dragon. No, you're not fooling anyone. Does he have white hair? Lord Corlys has chosen to serve alongside him, and yet he does still continue this subterfuge. The sea snake would sooner have high tide claimed by the sea than call us his sons. Yet. Stop wasting your life waiting for something that'll never come. Oh. That's rough. I don't blame him though. Knowing that it's at your fingertips like that? Just greatness, not even riches, not even being the heir, just greatness. We will still never match the strength of the green armies. We need Damon yeah. and his dragon. May I be free for even one hour of the constant refrain of Damon, Damon, Damon. Your Grace. <laughs> Damon. The Lady Massaria. Oh. <laughs> Our gift is sent. What does that mean? What gift? Yeah, what gift? Let us hope for clouds over the black water tonight. You don't have to be privy to everything, Jace. I heard people were shipping them. 
I can see it. Uh... What is that? I don't even know where this is. Is this Dragonstone? Is this the... Stepstones? Where are we right now? Is it like off of King's Landing with like food? Smart play. Are there more? Smart play. Oh, Lady Massaria. Cheers. Bummer. funny, I'm more concerned about Egg on the person than I am the king. What was she saying I'm sorry for, though? I wondered if you've heard from father. I've sent ravens to Highgard and and Old Town, but I've had no reply. I've heard nothing, but neither have I sent any message. Hmm. If you Maybe you should you try. Know, you were always his favorite. Strange there has been no word. Otto Hightower is ever resourceful. He will send news when there is news to send. Facts. My son Daron. Oh yeah, I forget about him. Like? Ten and six now. He's stalwart. Clever. As adept with his loot as he is with his sword. He's kind. That's nice. That's what she wanted to hear. Yeah. I wonder when we'll meet her son Darian. It's pretty important, because, like, if Aemon goes, you know, obviously they're not going to put Helena on the throne. <laughs> A woman on the throne? <laughs> Laughable. Please don't eat the dog. I understand the urge, but please don't. <laughs> Dude, where'd you get that food? We're near a ship's ships. They came ashore in the middle of the night with gifts from the Queen. She thinks of us even now! Way to win favor. Oh, great music. So they're allowed out to sea, but not out on land. I know it creates chaos, but at least they have food. Your graces. We must leave. Now. Yeah, you guys are not safe here. Is there a secret passageway? Do you have to take them out front? Oh god, no, not Helena. Why did Helena need to be here? Just the train of fishes! Keep moving! Oh, please don't. Uh, I don't really care so much about Allison at this moment. It's Helena. Protect Helena no matter what. No! Oh! Sheath your swords! Oh, this is not good for them. Oh my god! Helena! Yeah, you can't just start killing people, but like defend for your life. Oh my god. That's their job. That's their job. Oh my god. Oh, Helena. Long live Queen Rhaenyra. Yeah, you lost him. I'm surprised people haven't, like, tried, like, stabbing and eating a horse as it walks by. No more. Grand Maester instructed me to. The king will be most eager for his draft in an hour. Laris, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, we know you like to torture. Uh, you just want to talk to him while he's of sound mind? The drink takes the pain away, but it dulls your mind. Yeah. People will pity you. 
and they will stare at you. At you. Oh. <laughs> Your prayer rules in your place now, which means that your life is in danger. Terribly. But I think you know that. Mm. He's very aware. Wow, Laris, in that moment, with that tear. Jesus, the acting on this show is amazing. Is he having a vision of Viserys crying over his wife? Thank God we got Patty Constantine back for this episode. These two together are amazing. David, she's gone. I... <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful scene. Your grace. I don't care if they're just visions. I needed them. Lord Grover is dead. Oh, sad. Uh. The old man. He you told to be stifled with a pillow. Young Oscar Tully is now Lord Paramount of the Riverlands. Yay. What was the manner of Lord Grover's passing? Well, he'd been ill, of course. Mm -hmm. Any feathers in his lungs? Our own healer, Alice Rivers, volunteered her renowned skills. She plied her craft, but mm. there was not more to be done. She ended him. That's why she told Damon to wait. And Alice is real. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, kiddo. Oh, wow. I don't know. I just called him kiddo, but like, he just seems like such a young man in this moment. I think that's your baby. He calls to you. Sea smoke has been awoken. Uh-uh, I think sea smoke's gonna get himself a rider right here. It's you, you dummy. I'm gonna keep knocking you over till you figure it out. That's your dragon. That's your dragon, bucko. I am so excited for this. Oh, Jesus, Alan. I get, you have to look up. He gonna be right in front of you. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I was right, but kind of different. Woo! Get on my back, bitch, he says. Can you feel it? Oh, look at the baby, he's so beautiful. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought you'd be pleased. I do not think I can win this war. Ooh. That's not good. I think you are tired. My own <laughs> son questions my capabilities. He thinks I need Damon at my side. I think we just need Damon, period. And even if we somehow prevailed, how will I rule a kingdom when my own son doubts me? You have me? You have my thanks. It was my father. He had his pleasure with me. And when after many months of this, it became evident that his seed had taken root. Oh my God. I cannot bear children. He left me for dead. But I lived. <laughs> I think Rhaenyra needed that. Oh.
Hmm? Okay. I'm here for it. Okay. Begging your pardon, Your Grace. You just brush right the in. Dragon Sea Smoke has been sighted flying over Spice Town. Yes, he does that. With Not a rider. With he has a rider. The Greens? I don't know who else it could be. Shall I summon your council? Maybe he can land. I mean, what are they, what are bastards called in the sea? It's not sand, it's not snow, is it s s s ocean? Sea? Salt? What is it? Oh. Look, anytime we get to see a dragon fly, I'm excited, but where this is headed... <sighs> Don't end. Come on, let me see it. You rat bastards. <laughs> I wanted to see Alan being like, I'm the king of the world! On top of sea smoke. Ah! So good! God, I love this show. Okay, I got a refill. <laughs> what a great episode. Oh my god, this is like the, the type of episodes where this show just shines because there's so much happening. And it doesn't always have to be action-packed, but it has to be effective. And I think the small folk, you know, receiving food from the enemy queen that killed Prince Jaehaerys, you know, that, 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 like, them running through King's Landing with her banners with food, just, it's, I don't want to say it's beautiful because it was alarming of what we saw with Helena and Alicent, but, like, they're, they're restless, they're hungry, they're watching people live lavishly, and, and, and they're being forgotten, or they just, Eamon doesn't care about them, even when Laris brings it up, he's like, so? And it's just like, you can't have a kingdom if you don't have people in it, if you don't take care of them. And I think that that's like the whole, you know, it takes a village thing is like, it really, you know, you, you have to like invest in the people that live in your kingdom. And, and if you don't, and if you don't take care of them, they will pick another side because they are smart enough to know that, oh, you just think that we're blindly following you. Well, there's this person over here that has something to actually offer us and is willing to take care of us and help us. And the whole, you know, hail Queen Rhaenyra as they're like, you know, running through the streets. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm Team Black. Of course, I want Rhaenyra to win this whole thing. Um, you know, of course, I want her to be the person that, you know, helps the small folk. And with Masaria, you know, like, that was accomplished. I absolutely love that the last episode was women don't know anything about waging war. And this one is that Rhaenyra and Masaria are running things from behind the scenes. The women in the bar letting out the word, oh, like they're living so lavishly, you know, in, in the Red Keep. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's the women doing all the footwork to like make this all happen. And now there's all this unrest in King's Landing, but just everyone praising Rhaenyra's name. Uh, I love that. And I, I, there were some people that were like, oh, there's chemistry between those two. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. I mean, I feel like, I feel like anyone could really have chemistry with Emma because she's just, or they are just wonderful. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not mad at it. I mean, Damon is nowhere to be found. She's a queen. What are you going to do? I, I don't, I don't really have anything for it. And, you, you know, they've found trust in each other. Um, where there, there's like so many people, like even Jace, you know, like not really believing in Rhaenyra and the council not really believing in Rhaenyra. And I thought Corliss might, you know, do like a mic drop or something, but he didn't really have the opportunity. Um, but I do love that we, you know, I don't want to say we love, but like that we tested Sea Smoke to see if he would accept a rider. And I think we all kind of knew, oh, poor Sir Stefan, like that, like he wasn't going to be the one. And all I could see, and this is so bad, I, I don't know what the actor's name is, but I, all I could think of was Stephen Root 
from office space. And it's like, excuse me, that's my dragon. Um, that's, that's, that's horrible. You know, I think we knew it was going to end that way, but I think we had the hope and like seeing like the whole process of somebody trying to, you know, be a rider for a dragon that is restless. And it seemed like Sea Smoke was like, okay, why don't you try to hop up over here? And he's just like, <laughs> fooled you, Dracarys. Um, that was wild. And and it was great to see because you don't always want to see success in these things whenever there's a harebrained idea or somebody comes up with something wild and they try to enact the plan and it's always successful. Like, it's great to see the failure. But I also knew that when Alan was on the beach and he looked up and he saw sea smoke above him, that I was like, he's going to ride sea smoke. And I think that that was obviously a foreshadow. And there's some people just saying like, no, he was afraid of sea smoke. And um, I mean, yes, rightfully so. <laughs> sea smoke was like very, very dominant <laughs> to uh, the person who tried to ride him and the person that ran from him. And uh, I, Alan is on that baby. If Alan is not on a ship sailing with Corliss. He is in the sky soaring with Rhaenyra, and I think that that's amazing. I would hope that that's who he would pick. What side to be on, whether it was green or black, that he would choose Rhaenyra. And Rhaenyra is on a mission to find out who's riding her husband's dragon. Um, I think there's a long discussion there because obviously she's going to see black hair and kind of go, what? And there's going to have to be the discussion of, you know, like, because or what, it wasn't Alan. Was it Adam? It was Adam, not Alan. Sorry, I screwed that up. <laughs> not great. Um, but like with, with Adam being on Sea Smoke and Alan having to shave his blonde hair. And like, I was wondering why he was wearing like a head wrap the way he was, because it looked really ill fitting. It didn't look like it was like on purpose. Um, and like him hiding his white hair is... Uh, I think I, I really want Corliss because of Rhaenys's absence and because of Rhaenys almost giving Ellen her blessing. I think he needs this. Um, but I, I'm I am so excited to see Sea Smoke in action. And we learned that there is a large dragon in the Vale that is in the Eerie that was eating sheep. And Reyna was just like, because I thought at first I was like, it was a little baby dragons. I was like, well, it's a lot of like damage for baby dragons, but I don't know what baby dragons eat necessarily. But there is a large dragon that I think, I think Reyna is going to finally find her match. And really, it's just finding the dragon that works best with you, that pairs up with you. And, you know, Lainor being Corliss's son... And, and and Adam being Corliss's bastard son, I think that that's actually really beautiful. That's very poetic. And I, I'm, I'm really happy to see it and excited to see it. Now, things that were slightly painful in this was actually watching Aegon, who I have actually really... Uh, Tom does a great job playing Aegon, but I have so much sympathy for Aegon and so much empathy for his character a role that he never thought that he was going to have, that he was never really prepared for, that he never really took serious, because Viserys had Rhaenyra Ren as his heir, you know, and, like, wanted to prove himself. And, you know, it, granted, he did, he did the mistake of not really keeping an eye on Aemond, because Aemond is... He's going to do what needs to be done. He's pragmatic in that way, I think. Like, he's... He, when he doesn't see a need for something, he won't do it. Like, like firing Alicent. Like, he's just like, why are you here? What are you doing? What do you add to this? And, you know, firing his mom from the council and then asking for Otto Hightower to come back to be his hand because, like, he doesn't really trust Laris. And Laris was kind of like, oh, like, you need a hand. And, and he was just like, yeah, call my grandsire. Not you. And poor Laris, you know, going to Aemond and seeing that Aemond is in pain and telling him like, hey, my father thought this about me when I was born in Harrenhal that, you know, I I had a curse on me and like people doubting him and always seeing that he has this handicap and that like, you know, always, always seeing him as broken. And my God, Matthew, that tear falling from his face. I don't like Laris, but I love how this show makes you feel empathy for people who, like, they made Littlefinger very much just outright, like, not a great person. Nothing really redeemable, but he was always really smart and he was moving chess pieces a lot. And Laris is actually not 
necessarily redeemable, but like there is an empathy there of like, you can see how he became the person that he is and why he's still making the pursuits that he is. There's nothing forgiving about killing your father, your brother, or torturing all the people that you have, you know, um, but you can see how he got there. And him counseling Aegon and pretty much saying, like, people are going to doubt you or, you know, they're they're going to see you as broken and kind of trying to, like, tell him, like, you need to be strong. Um, I think that that was actually just such a great scene. And I don't know what Allison was necessarily saying sorry for when she was, like, holding his hand. If she was saying, like, I'm sorry that this happened to you or I'm sorry that like I'm moving on from you and that like I think you're going to die so I'm going to like you know light a candle for you and then you know try to do whatever I can because I failed you in this Eamon doesn't want me around you know where's my father like talking to you know Gwen and like hearing about Darian which was great that he's actually kind I love that for her at least I don't know where Darian plays in, but they've mentioned his name quite a few times, so I feel like we're going to see him eventually. And he's 16, so, you know, he's at that age. How old is Aegon, then? I don't know how old Aegon or Aemond are, that if Darian is of 6 and 10, which I think is 16, uh, maybe she just was popping out babies one after the other. Not sure. Um, her her whole scene with Helena and running from the Sept and her not wanting, you know, the, the knights to draw their swords after the man has his hand cut off. Like, she doesn't want these people to go through this. She cares more about them than Eamon does, for sure. But, like, I didn't want Helena to be traumatized from the whole thing because she is... She is... She is precious. You know, she's she is delicate in a way that is not that she can be easily broken, but the way she bends is sometimes not fixable. And and I, I fear for her for that because she's the only person that I think is of no fault. And it, it, the, my sympathies are always with Helena. That was a wild scene. Poor thing. Okay. So Alice Rivers is real. And she went to go to the Riverlands and Grover Tully is now And so Kermit, who was the grandson? This Grover, Elmo, whatever they are. Um, Big Bird at this point. I don't even care, but uh, I was like, did the grandson put the pillow over his face? Was there feathers in his lungs? And when he said Alice Rivers, I was like, that's what she was talking about. Again, like, Alice Rivers might show up to Harrenhal and might be a completely different person. So I'm not sure. The fact that she had the barn owl fly towards him or towards her. And then, like, Damon actually asking for help as to what to do with the Riverlands. Um, I think, like, him weeping after hearing that Grover Tully had died. That, like, there was a sense of relief. Like, there's hope for him to actually accomplish this job that he was here to do. But can I tell you... When he walked through that door, I swear to God, I thought I saw Viserys. And then it was Damon. And I was like, oh my God, I thought that was Viserys. And then Patty Constantine. <sighs> it was so lovely to have him back. He is so good in the role of Viserys. And him and Matt Smith together are just absolute magic. And, and, and the way Damon and Viserys have that moment, the tears in Damon's eyes and how he just wants to run from it. He doesn't want to face it. You know, the, I mean, he did threaten Sir Simon right after and was like accusing him of poisoning him, which I'm like, yeah, someone is. Uh, I would like to think it was Alice. Maybe it is Sir Simon. That's why Sir Simon was like, shh, shh, shh. Like, I know how to like get somebody down off of the shit that I've been putting in their tea. I don't know. But, you know, and then him later on having that moment with Viserys after Viserys' wife died. And I'm so sorry. I can never remember her name. I think it also begins with an A. Pick a different letter from the alphabet, people. Um, <laughs> but him actually being there to comfort his brother when his wife passed and how he wasn't there before and how he could be there for him. And like him having these moments of like maybe regrets that he wasn't in, in the presence of and the things that he said, like, you know, like air for a day. And I was like, oh, you're still holding on to that. And like just how disrespectful it was to his brother to even say those things 
I think his brother would, I think Viserys would have wanted Damon to be the heir to the throne, but like he couldn't trust him through all the things that he was saying, like heir for a day and that he never seemed regretful or remorseful for anything that he said or that he did. And he was always a wild rogue character and that he just got to behave however he wanted to because he was a man, as Rhaenyra said, you know, he got to be everything Rhaenyra wanted to be and everything Rhaenyra got from Viserys is what Damon wanted. And it was just a lovely, beautiful scene, both of them, with him and Patty. My God, we are just... We are so spoiled for what we get in this show. And this episode in particular, I think, was really good. And I don't know if it was the drink that helped it along, but I think, like, just... On its own was a fantastic episode. And of course, you know, I freak out every time there's a dragon. Caraxes is my baby. I love to see sea smoke up close and personal. It was beautiful both times. The show is more than just about like dragons and dragon riders. It's, you know, the, the, the people that represent dragons and then the dragons themselves. And it's just how like gods can come crashing down and power isn't necessarily power. You know, Aemon thinks he has power, but like he's neglecting the small folk. And, you know, Rhaenyra doesn't think she has power because she doesn't have the bodies and she doesn't have the men yet. And Damon is going to come through. I just really hope that he'll let up this thing about being called your grace. And maybe he's supposed to be called your grace, but like about being king instead of king consort and really saying like, you are my queen and I will follow you wherever you will go. And, and really having that united front. I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and I know that like some people say like, well, in the book this and in the book that. And, and I totally get that they change things to kind of keep everybody on their toes and they combine storylines or they get rid of storylines completely. And a lot of side characters get missed out that are in the books. Um, but I, 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 I would really like to see a united front with Damon and Rhaenyra. And I don't know if we ever get that, but I also want to see a fight with Damon and Aemond. Because, like, I think Aemon's true desire is to beat his uncle. And I think Damon going through, like, I don't want to say Dark Knight of the Soul, but going through, like, this exercising of his demons will make him so clear-headed in battle that Aemon will have a, a battle and, and Damon will be reckoned with. He will be. So I'm really excited to see that. But guys, if you want to watch the full-length reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I haven't even taken a drink of this. You knew. You knew Sir Stefan had no shot in hell, right? I'm pretty sure I knew that. And I, because I think I'd been championing for Adam to be the writer since he was on that beach looking up at Sea Smoke. I was like, that baby's calling to you. And then when Sea Smoke is kind of awoken and somebody tries to like ride him, he's just like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to get the job done myself. I'm going to go find my guy. Um, that's exciting. I don't know if Sea Smoke's a boy or a girl. Maybe like Sea Whisper would be more of a girl name. I don't know. But if Sea Smoke is a girl, bitch be looking good. Uh, that is a beautiful fucking dragon. Looks like smoke. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm, I am so excited to see Rhaenyra meet up with Adam. Um, Alan, you know, going out to sea with Corliss and then b building this relationship. Uh, Reyna possibly wrangling a dragon in the Eyrie. Like, there's so much that's going on. And, like, I think there's only eight episodes a season. Please. I don't know if there's ten. But um, I'm going to cross my fingers for ten. But there's probably only eight. So there's probably only two episodes left. And the show just, like, there's sometimes, like, it drags. This had zero drag. This was an amazing episode. Everything about it was... It's what I'm here for. So guys, come back here for the next episode. And in the meantime, I'm going to take some... I'm going to take some ibuprofen tonight. Because who drinks wine on a Sunday? <laughs> Somebody who grets it on Monday. That's for damn sure. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>